Hello guys, uh, welcome all of you to today's farmcast and as the ritual, today also we'll discuss 5 drug of choice, 1 anti-cancer drug and few questions asked by the students, which I'll discuss at last. Uh, so let's begin with the drugs of choice guys for today. The first one is IBS, Irritable Bowel Syndrome. Now guys remember for IBS or Irritable Bowel Syndrome, there can be either constipation or diarrhea, right? So if it is constipation, predominant IBS. In that case, our drug of choice or the first drug that we use is PEG, polyethylene glycol. That is the first drug that we go to and it is an osmotic laxative. It pulls water into the colon and thus it is helpful in constipation. Um, whereas uh, the questions which are asked in your exams are more about the new drugs for treatment of IBS with constipation and which are new drugs means which are costlier. So we use them only if polyethylene glycol is not effective or the patient is not able to tolerate right for whatsoever reason side effect or any other thing now the new drugs if you talk about the new drugs the first one is called as lubiprostone and lubiprostone is a type 2 chloride channel stimulator guys so by stimulating type 2 chloride channels in the intestinal epithelial cells it drives chloride into the lumen and water follows Similarly, there is a second class of drugs, linaclotide and plecanatide. Linaclotide and plecanatide. And these two drugs, like linaclotide, plecanatide, they are stimulators of guanylate cyclase, because of which cyclic GMP increases and cyclic GMP further stimulates CFTR, cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator, which pumps chloride into the lumen and water follows. So, in other words, these lubiprostone and linaclotide like drugs they are called as chloride secretory agents right so most of your mcqs in ibs are around these two drugs lubiprostone or linaclotide plecanatide whereas the other side of the coin is ibs with diarrhea now guys if it is ibs with diarrhea then the drug of choice is loperamide opioid loperamide that is used and uh, an alternative to loperamide is a drug called as allocetron Allocetron, as you might have guessed from the name itself, it is a 5ST3 antagonist, but it is not used in um, nausea vomiting. It is rather used for treatment of diarrhea. And the limitation is, Allocetron has been FDA approved only for females, IBS with diarrhea in females. And there is a big drawback of Allocetron. Why it is not widely or rampantly used is because it can cause ischemic colitis, right? Ischemic colitis. So that's one point that will be asked in your upcoming exams. However, allocetron has already been asked in a neat exam a few years back. Now moving ahead to the second disorder for today that is isosporiasis. Now guys, isosporiasis recently in your AIMS exam they had give, given you, they had given you um, an image of isospora and they had asked you what is the drug of choice for this organism. See, isosporiasis drug of choice is co-trimoxazole that is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole combination, right? And apart from co-trimoxazole, there are two other drugs which can be used, alternatives. One is ciprofloxacin and another one is nitazoxanide, right? Now coming to the third disorder for today guys, jet lag. So all of you know what is a jet lag, right? While you travel from one place to another place, sometimes you find uh, it difficult to induce the sleep because of a difference in the time zone. So jet lag, whenever I want a drug for treatment of jet lag means I'm talking about sleep induction and not maintenance and that is why for jet lag, I use short-acting drugs like the drug of choice is Zaleplon. Z compounds are preferred in insomnia or jet lag. Here, here I will prefer Zaleplon because that is shortest acting Z compound. An alternative to Zaleplon is Rameltion and Rameltion, though it is not as effective as Zaleplon. But Rameltion, the good thing about Rameltion, I have, as I have said yesterday as well, that uh, Rameltion does not uh, uh, cause dependence, right? You will not be in habitual dependent on this drug rameltion so dependence or addiction is lesser with rameltion as compared to z compounds or benzodiazepines the fourth disorder for today guys it is kala azar or visceral leishmaniasis so kala azar or visceral leishmaniasis all of you know this guys the drug of choice is liposomal intravenous amphotericin b and however the oral drug of choice oral drug of choice is miltifosin both are asked in your exams so drug of choice is intravenous liposomal amphotericin b Oral drug of choice is miltifosin. The fifth and the last disorder for today, it is guys Kaposi sarcoma. 
So Kapos is sarcoma, um, you know the drug of choice here, these are anti-tumor antibiotics and two of them are preferred, one is doxorubicin, another one is downorubicin. So drug of choice for Kapos is sarcoma is either doxorubicin or downorubicin. Um, alternative, we can also use interferon alpha for Kaposi sarcoma, but you know, we do not prefer interferon alpha as a first line drug for any disorder nowadays, and that is uh, because of the side effects which are seen with interferon alpha. I guess coming to the second part of PharmCast where I discuss one anti cancer drug, today the drug I have chosen is gemcitabine, and gemcitabine is drug of choice for pancreatic cancer, right? It is drug of choice for pancreatic cancer, and if a patient does not respond to gemcitabine, then we use a combination of drugs and that is called as folfirinox, right? Folfirinox where we use folinic acid, 5-fluoroacyl, ironotecan, oxaliplatin. This combination is called as folfirinox and folfirinox is reserved for treatment of uh, gemcitabine resistant pancreatic cancer. Gemcitabine can also be used in bladder cancer. One side effect of gemcitabine which is important and which has been asked a couple of times is HUS, hemolytic uremic syndrome. So gemcitabine can cause HUS. So guys, we have reached to the fag end of our farmcast for today, where I discuss some of your questions. And the first question I'll discuss was asked by Raghavendra. So how to revise uh, images a day before the exam and is the custom module uh, with only image based questions a good method? See, I, I've already told you, right, so from that you're asking, I guess, because I told you that uh, the best thing to do in today's scenario is to revise, um, you know, the, the, because we always think what to revise the last day, day before the exam. And I had already advised you guys to revise uh, all the images and try to make a collection of the images. So you can also use the custom module in Mero to revise uh, a day before the exam. And that's one way to go about it or else uh, if you don't have access to Mero then you can make a digital collection of such images with some points that you can write uh, theoretical points about those images you can write it down so you can keep on revising until the exam and the day before exam you should revise only images and why I feel like that the reason being guys going by the previous MCA exam that was conducted by the net board I think your neat exam is gonna be uh, quite clinical and there will be a lot of images, x-rays, CT scans, they will flood, they will flood your question paper with a lot of images. So you need to be thorough with the images, right? Now moving on to the second question and Kaushal, Kaushal Vanjani has asked, Sir, I have done only 50% of QBank, I am done with notes and should I complete QBank or what should I do? See guys, I have already covered it many times that solving questions should be a, a daily affair right it, sh it should be like a ritual that every day you have to do some question and going forward even when you are revising right you'll be revising your notes and even at that time also you need to dedicate at least uh, 20 to 30 percent of your day's time to solving mcqs which means what if you have not been able to uh, do the complete q bank there is nothing to worry about you still have october november december so gradually Right, take this time, so daily uh, 20 to 30 percent of your time, keep solving this Q bank. See, question practice why it is important. It is not just to complete a timetable that all right, I have done this topic and I have to solve questions. It's not like that, guys. You have to solve questions because at the end of the day, your exam is MCQ based. So you need to do daily practice. So that practice is important, right? So keep covering those. And I'll tell you something. Um, Sometimes you, you are not able to cover uh, your target within a time. So set a time like three hours and do as much as you can, right? Do as much as you can. So you cannot have everything perfect, right? Now coming to the third question, which uh, was asked by Husaina Parveen. And so, so Husaina has asked a question. I have uh, lost the drive to move ahead. And my days are not as productive as it used to be. So what should I do? See Husaina. Um, this is called as pre-exam jitters, right? And it, it usually happens by the time we begin revision. And uh, what happens is, once we complete the course, we sit down and we look at the course that we need to revise in such a short period of time. And it is not wrong to say that it is a mountain of a course that we have to revise. And we tend to give up even before beginning the ascent, right? So I'll tell you a way out of it and uh, we are in the beginning of October, right? And now you have a timetable to make 
for October, November, December. So three months, October, November, December. So what you need to do is sit down, chalk out a plan, right? So you have 90 days. So in these 90 days, you have to uh, chalk out how you need to revise for how many days you need to do your first revision, then second revision, and then break down every day into hours. So, so you have to break down the hours, like I have 10 hours on in this day. And so in these 10 hours, I need to revise, let us say, arrhythmia in these two hours, CHF in these two hours, like that. So when you do that, you would see that, right, you don't have any time left. You don't have any time left and you are in a tight race with time. And believe me, guys, if you begin to follow this timetable method, right, there would be days where you'll uh, feel uh, that why, why, why our day has only 24 hours. I wish our day had like 48 hours because the number of days are limited. You'll, many of you, you'll, you'll get that feeling. I used to get that feeling while, while I was revising because the course was too much and I, I had to cover that with, with, within a limited time and all of you have to, eventually you have to do that. And mind it, you might think that everything would be perfect. No, everything would not be perfect. You'll, you'll have one day, one off day or two off days where you are not able to perform as per your expectation. Well, let me remind you, it's perfectly normal, guys. It's perfectly normal. It happens with most of us, right? We have, all of us have some non-productive days, but that, that, that does not mean that you have to bog down, right? So keep going, guys. Keep going ahead and follow this timetable method. And um, I hope you will go through it. So that's all for today, guys. Uh, if you have any doubts, if you have any queries in uh, relation to your preparation, you can always let me know in the comment box. I would be more than happy to include your doubts in the next farmcast so take care bye take take care guys bye bye this is Dr. Ranjan with you